All right, hello, welcome back everybody. PayPal and Patreon are down below if you want to support me, and we do so if you actually can. So as we recently had the annual GDP level updates, it's now time to do another run through, looking at what the GDP charts actually look like when you adjust them to inflation. So at nominal or face value, just the raw numbers themselves, things don't look that bad. However, when you actually factor in the value differential over time, it kind of visually reveals a lot of things you already knew or just already felt in general. On the global scale, the global economy, in terms of its adjusted equivalent value, was growing pretty decently all the way up until about the last decade, the 2010s. The global economy, in terms of its adjusted or equivalent value, has not really gone all that much upward. Instead of a 30 or 40 degree angle linear upwards, it's only really been going in the single digits, less than 10 degrees in terms of its upward angle for the last 10 or 15 years now. The U.S. is one of the few examples where even inflation adjusted it is still growing upwards, but the U.S. has managed to maintain an actual value-adjusted upward trend for the time being. China, meanwhile, everybody knew nominally face value has been flat for the last four or five years or so. However, their flattening out or their curving off started a little bit before that. They actually started leveling out into no real growth around 2018 or 2019 or so. India, one of the only ones that's still really growing, although their rate has slowed down a bit compared to previously, they have shallowed out to a lesser, you might call it more normal angle. For Japan, the reason why, despite only seeming stagnant or so for the last three decades, the reason why in Japan they feel more like things are kind of worse than the past is because in real value they are. In the 90s, at Japan's absolute economic height, the roughly five trillion or so that their economy was worth back then was worth in excess of 10 trillion dollars in today's money. Germany has also in inflation adjusted value not really grown since the 90s either, although they have stayed closer to stagnant as opposed to the massive as opposed to the massive value decline that Japan has gone through the UK peaked economically around 2000 and has been on a descent since in actual adjusted value after peaking at what would be equivalent to today 4 trillion France with different divots here and there was going up generally all the way up until 2008 happened and since then, France has value-wise actually been going down from four down to three trillion in adjusted value for Brazil. The reason why it feels like things are bad compared to how they used to be is because they are both nominally at face value and in the actual adjusted has taken quite a bit of a drop. Italy has been a mix of stagnant and has not really gone up. Spain peaked in 2008 and has had a real adjusted value decent descent since the financial collapse and has never actually recovered, although they have stopped descending. Russia was actually going up pretty nicely for a while until 2014 or so. Might have been when they started making a recurring pattern of decisions that has inevitably kept them from really going anywhere. South Africa in real adjusted value peaked around 2010 and has been on the downwards ever since then for, for a number of reasons that we've talked about frequently. I might link a video in the corner that discusses the primary one. In Nigeria, they actually got up to decent adjusted value numbers in the past. However, various different things, such as civil war, military coups, caused them to then collapse afterwards. And most recently, they did get up to pretty decent levels in the 2010s. 
However, they started descending from there, and both nominally and in inflation-adjusted value, they have collapsed now down to only 200 billion in terms of their total economic size. South Korea was going up pretty decently in value until around the mid-2010s, where they started to level off, and now they've started to curve over. Egypt has had decent growth, both nominally and in inflation-adjusted value. They've had a uh, They've had a number of descents caused by various things, and each of those has proven temporary for this one. We'll have to wait and see whether they rebound from it or not. Canada, not descending yet, but in actual adjusted value, has remained effectively flat or effectively stagnant since 2008, has not really gone anywhere. For Argentina, both on the nominal face value and in the actual inflation-adjusted value, although it's a bit more pronounced in the inflation-adjusted value, you can see the plateaus or mountains and then immediate collapses that they have as the country for over a century now has been locked into a cycle of every 20 years, their economy and the country itself completely implodes and collapses. Vietnam, one of the few who is still truly growing, both nominal and in inflation-adjusted value. Poland actually had stagnated for a little bit post-2008. However, they are now starting to creep upwards again. The Philippines is one of the others that has still been genuinely growing, although since the mid-2010s, their upward angle has shallowed out. Same story with Indonesia, who was going up pretty steeply until 2010 or so, and since then has been still climbing in real value, but at a slower, more gradual pace. Pakistan was growing decently in both nominal and real value until 2018 or so, it looks like. From there, everything has started to be downhill, as a number of things have been happening in the country, various various forms of unrest, various amounts of infrastructural and other decay and breakdown. Mexico has been stagnant since the start of the 2010s or so, whereas Australia has been stagnant for most of the 2010s. They peaked in 2012 and descended in inflation-adjusted value a bit, but since then have remained relatively flat. Bangladesh was one of the few who was still genuinely growing, until the last couple years because of a similar negative feedback loop to Pakistan and South Africa. Thailand started curving out in the 2010s and now seems to be hitting that same undulating stagnation plateau. If it feels like things are pretty bad in Greece, it's because they are. Greece's current economy, even though not too far in nominal value from what it was pre-2008 collapse is actually only in real value about half the size that it was pre-2008 collapse. Turkey had the same massive upgrowth in the 2000s as many others, and once they got to the early or mid-2010s, they started having a rapid descent from there. However, they seem to have reversed that over the last couple years, and that's all of the major ones that we were going to talk about in this one. So thank you everybody for sticking around and listening. Like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you haven't already. PayPal and Patreon are down there if you want to support me, only do so if you actually can. There's a link in the description to a Google Drive with these and all kinds of other graphs across all different kinds of subjects and metrics. There's a link to my photography Instagram and a link to my cat's YouTube channel in the top end comment. May God bless and protect all of you, and I will see you all around next time.